everyone, welcome to my channel, 10 Ways to Wear It. I'm Alicia, and on this channel, I take one fashion item or one fashion trend and show you guys 10 different ways to wear it. Now, in today's video, I am doing my first full get ready with me. I'm doing my makeup, my hair, and showing you guys a couple of outfits. This is the first of this kind on my channel, but I'm really excited to do it. I've been wanting to do it for a while. I just wasn't sure how to do it, and you know, with some practice, I'm bringing you guys something today. I don't, I don't know how it's gonna roll but I'm bringing y'all something, okay? I'm gonna show you guys how I got this really cute hairstyle. You guys always compliment my hair, so I'm showing you guys how I do it, as well as this really natural look. This is basically my everyday look. I'm not really into a lot of color on my eyes and all that kind of stuff, all the fancy stuff you see. I like more simple, natural looks because I think that's what look, looks best on me, you know? Every time I try to do a colorful look, I feel like I can compete on RuPaul's Drag Race. So <laughs> I'm gonna stick to the natural and the neutral. So that's what we're bringing you guys today. I hope you like this video. If you do, definitely leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. Enjoy. <laughs> So I know I look crazy right now, I look like Julio, but we about to do this hair up and it's gonna be looking super cute in a few minutes. I wanted to talk you through this part because I wanna show you guys what I'm gonna be using and how I'm gonna be using it. I'm basically gonna be using this Free Trust Oval Part Crochet Wig. I love this wig. You guys have seen a ton of this wig on my channel as well as on my Instagram. I use this wig in a lot of different ways. It's great because it's a drawstring wig, so you can kind of draw it up and wear it just on the back of your head. You can wear it as a full wig, or you can wear it as the oval part and have like some leave out. So I love this wig. I purchased this on hairsofly.com, and you can also purchase it a few other places, but that's where I got it. It's really, really reasonably priced there. I think it's like $20.99 or $21.99, and sometimes they even have it on sale cheaper. So I love this wig. Mine is in the color 1B. I'm also going to be using this crochet hair. This is Bobby Boss's Brazilian Water Curl hair. It very much resembles the hair on the wig. So I'm going to be using this to create my three little buns. And as you can see, I've put my hair in three ponytails, one in the middle and two on the sides here. I slicked my ponytails using the Ebon 24 Hour Edge Tamer. I love this edge tamer. It's pretty much the only one that I use these days. I use Eco Styler Gel, the olive oil, and I use that, so, and I love it. It sticks my hair so good. As you know, I'm natural. I transitioned from being relaxed about five months ago. I cut off the last of my relaxed hair, so this is what we working with, y'all. My hair is so thin in the front for some reason, and then it's like super thick in the back. It's like weird, but this is the way I'm gonna be styling my hair. I basically parted out some hair in the front and made three ponytails in the front. And then in the back, I made like a braid across so that the wig can grip onto that. And then the rest of the back is in a ponytail. I'm gonna turn around and show you guys. So hopefully you can see that. I just made like a little ponytail, braided it up and pinned it up. And then I have my little anchor braid going across my head there. So that's gonna be what I'm gonna attach the wig to the back of my head with. And then I pull the little drawstring, fluff it out. And then I'm gonna do my little buns here. So this hairstyle is gonna be super cute, you guys. What I'm gonna do with this crochet here is actually crochet it onto these three hair things. I love these ponytail holders. I buy these on Amazon and I love them because they have no glue. They don't pop. You know how some you stretch it and it pops. These last forever because they're just cut off of like a long band. I buy these on Amazon and they come in like 200 in a pack. So I'll link these below for you guys. These are like the best hair things ever and they don't pull your hair out either. So let's get into these hairstyles. Um, this hairstyle. I'm so excited to get my hair done, y'all. I feel like straight up Julio. <laughs> made my three little crochet ponytails here 
and they're gonna be really easy for me to just wrap around my hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the wig out. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use one that I've already used instead of opening up a new one. Told y'all I love this wig, so yeah, I got a few of them. Um, you know, when you really like something, you gotta have it on the ready. As you can see, here's the construction of this wig. It has a nice stretchy cap. It has about five combs inside of it. And it also has a drawstring that you can pull. So I can go ahead and open that up. I like to kind of fluff it out before I put it on my head, make sure it's not matted anywhere. This hair is really great. It lasts me a long time. One of these wigs usually lasts me about four months if I wear it a lot. So I love it. I don't put any products in it. I don't spray anything on it. Um, I just wear it as is, so, so far, so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the wig. I'm just gonna attach it to my little anchor braid that I made here. I'm gonna lean forward so you guys can hopefully see that. And then in the back, I'm just kind of tucking it into my ponytail in the back, not too hard because you don't wanna pull your hair out. This is a protective style for me, so, you know, I try not to do too much damage to my hair when I'm applying these wigs and stuff because these combs can start to affect your hair so i usually change the position a lot and you know the position that i put the combs and then i don't put it too tight so now that the wig is on i like to have a little bit more security so i'm going to take a few bobby pins and pin it in a few different places just maybe three or so one in the middle here like kind of towards the top and then i'll do one at the back like underneath my ponytail and then i'll do one on each side so I just kind of go under there. This cap is like really stretchy and loose, so it's easy to apply the bobby pins in there. And that just makes it feel more secure. It really does feel like I have a weave almost. So now that that is on, awesome. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put on my little ponytails. What I'm gonna do is just take my hair and kind of wrap it around in a little bun type of situation. And then I'm gonna hold it in place while I take the crocheted hair and wrap it around. So I'm gonna just grab this part here, just kind of wrap it around my little bun. And at the same time, I'm securing my hair down out of the way. My little, little braids. <laughs> Not that they really in the way, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the middle one. And I just kind of tighten the hair a little bit. I only knot mine once because sometimes I like to take it off of here and put it all on one and make like a big bun or something. So I don't, I don't loop it a bunch of times and all that stuff. It's not necessary. So I go ahead and take that. I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this little ponytail around, hold it in place, secure this hair thing around it. And I'm wrapping it a few times. I want it to be really secure. So there you go. That's down. And last one, send a little braid right there, and just wrap that around itself. Then I'm going to take the crochet hair, hold it there, and just wrap the ponytail holder around. Try not to grab any of the other hair. I should have used the ponytail holder to pin it back or something, but it's okay. So I got my three little holders on there. Now I'm just going to shape out my little buns. I have some bobby pins here. So I'm just gonna take my little crochet here. Now I could like really stretch this and kind of bantu knot it really tight, but I don't feel like doing all that and I don't, you know, it's not really necessary. <laughs> it's just not. I'm an easygoing person. I don't like complicated stuff. So yeah, I'm just gonna do this the easy way. So I'm just gonna kind of twist it a little bit start wrapping it around itself wrapping it around the little bun that's under there and i don't like to use too many bobby pins in my hair so i'm gonna really position it and get the hair together where i only have to use one I'll go ahead and slide that in to secure it and now we got one little bun there you guys can see it hopefully you can see that now zoom in so you guys can see once i'm completely done so we're going to the middle bun which we really want to look cute and don't worry about covering that little bun. As you wrap it, you're going to cover that up. So just kind of twist the hair a little bit and then start going around that little bun in the middle. My little pathetic. <laughs> I used to care so much about my hair when it was like full and thick and long. And as you guys follow me and get to know me more, you'll see old pictures where my hair was just flourishing. And then, of course, I had to F with it. 
And um, now I just, uh, you know, I realize it's not that important. It's not a big deal. As long as you know how to work with the hair you got and you feel good on how you wear it, that's all that matters. So, you know, hair is hair. And um, even if my hair never goes back to the way it was, I'm still gonna look cute. I'm still gonna work that shit, so whatever. So wrapping around my last little bun. Ooh, ooh. You got a hairstyle, y'all. I'm looking in a mirror, you guys, so. You know, it's my first get ready with me, so don't judge me. I gotta see what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm gonna just pin that. And I can already tell I might need another body pin on this one. This one, the last one. The last one, like that last child, it always got a trip. All right, so I got my three little buns here. Can you guys see them? Um, let me stand up so you guys can see them all better. And this wig is so good that you can't even see anything like as far as when, where the wig starts. I just like to fluff it out a little bit and you can't see a thing. So I love this hairstyle. Um, I'm gonna go and just kind of tie something around my head so we can get into the makeup. And that's gonna be a voiceover. It's gonna be real quick, so let's get into it. So the first thing I like to do is prime my face. Lately, I have been stuck on the Milk Hydro Grip Primer, you guys. That is one of the best primers I have ever used. It's really, really a great primer. It goes on so smooth. It smooths out all the texture on my face and it also sinks into all my fine lines to really help my skin look smooth when I apply my foundation. So I just love that primer. It's so good. I like to rub it all over my face and neck and it really just makes my makeup last, you guys. So if you you haven't tried it definitely try it believe the hype on this one because it's a really great primer I like to go in with a little bit more underneath my eyes just to help prevent creasing I have an issue with creasing under my eyes for some reason with certain products but with this primer I don't even have any issues with my makeup creasing underneath my eyes so I like to go in with a little bit extra and it works out perfect you guys I love this primer and after I get it all over my face I like to kind of fan my face a a little bit just to let it dry down a little bit and get really tacky before I go in with my foundation. Now that my primer has dried down a little bit and gotten a little tacky, I like to go in with my foundation. Today I'm going to be using the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Foundation in the shade Coco. I apply that with a flat e.l.f. brush. It's number 104 and I love the way this brush applies my foundation. It just really helps me to trace around my eyebrows and everything. I love this brush. I actually picked it up at a Rite Aid, but you can order e.l.f. brushes online as well, but I, don't, I love this brush and this foundation is awesome you guys the can't stop won't stop foundation is such a great foundation it's full coverage I don't have to color correct I don't have to go over my blemishes it completely covers everything this color is not an exact match for my skin but once I blend it in it really looks great on my skin so I'm in the color cocoa and I really like this foundation I would definitely definitely recommend it And I like to drag my foundation down my neck as well, just to make sure that everything's blended. You don't wanna just stop at your neck when you're putting on your foundation because then your neck won't match your face. So I like to drag mine down a little bit. I also like to go in with a Real Technique sponge. This is a dampened sponge and I use this to kind of take off any excess product but to also really melt the foundation into my skin because it just gives me such a flawless finish. So that's another step that I do before I move on. Take that Real Technique sponge and pat my foundation down. Now I'm ready to highlight and contour my face. To highlight, I'm gonna be using the NYX Sculpt and Highlight Face Duo in the color Chestnut and Sand. Particularly, I'm gonna be going in with sand underneath my eyes. I'm also gonna go down the bridge of my nose, a little bit on my forehead and my chin, and this is gonna help me to go ahead and start sculpting out my face and adding more definition to my face. I have a really round, chubby face, so contouring and highlighting is important for me to bring some shape 
shape to my face so I really like to use a nice bright concealer a lot of people go in with maybe one or two shades lighter but I like to go three to four shades lighter because it helps me to really define the contour and the highlight and it helps me to use less products in the end so I like to go a little bit brighter after I use this NYX um, sand underneath my eyes and my nose and forehead I like to go over it with another concealer I'm gonna go over it with the Maybelline instant age rewind concealer in the color caramel and again that's gonna add even more brightness to those areas to really pull them out and really give my face a lot more definition so I like to go over it with that caramel and it again once I blend that out it just gives me such great definition on my chubby cheeks <laughs> I'm gonna fan that down a little bit and now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my contour while that dries down. For contour, I like to use a foundation stick. I'm gonna use the Black Radiance foundation stick in the color Chocolate Dipped. And I'm gonna do it in all your standard areas. I'm gonna put that contour on my cheeks. I'm also gonna put that underneath my chin to kind of cut off the extra fries and burgers and stuff that I've been eating. <laughs> but to basically kind of just chisel out my face, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on my cheek cheekbones even a little bit higher and I'm also going to put that around my chin and then blend that out really good. To blend that out I'm going to be using a Real Techniques contour brush and I'm just going to take that and really blend out that contour as best as I can. I'm also going to take the little bit left on the brush and put it on my forehead. So I don't really go in with the stick on my forehead unless I'm trying to like really chisel out my face. But in this case I'm just going to use what's left over to chisel out my forehead and you'll see that in a second. I like to just drag that contour forward and really cut off my chin area because I do have kind of a chubby chin and a chubby face. So this is how I kind of cut off that area and make my face look a lot slimmer. I also take that underneath my lip just to give me some good definition all over my face. And like I said, whatever's left on the brush, I use that to go over my forehead and kind of shape out my forehead a little bit. Now that my concealer has had some time to kind of dry down a bit, I'm gonna take this Sonia Kashuk sponge. This sponge is dampened. I will always wash my sponges before I use them. So it is a little bit damp and I'm gonna go ahead and blend out that concealer really well. I don't um, take it out too far towards my ears because like I said, I have a chubby face and doing that would only make my face look even whiter. But I do like to drag mine down a little bit more towards my lip because I find that that slims my face a little bit more. So that's what I'm doing here, just kind of blending it in, but also bringing it down a little bit, making sure to press it in really good underneath those eyes so that it gets into my fine lines and doesn't crease. So that's what I'm doing here, also blending out the chin, and then I'm gonna blend out that nose really good. And allowing the concealer to dry, you guys, really does help it to kind of stay in place a little bit more. When it's not as wet, it kind of stays where you need it to stay. So I like to let mine dry down for a few minutes. I also take whatever is left on my sponge and kind of put it underneath my contour just to define that contour a little bit more. And now that is pretty much all blended in. I'm gonna just go over that contour a little bit more. Make sure it's popping out, chiseling out that face, girl. So now I'm gonna go ahead and shape out my nose a little bit. I'm gonna go back into that Black Radiance foundation stick in the color Chocolate Dipped. And I'm gonna use a small e.l.f. brush. I think this is a shadow brush that I'm using, but I'm gonna use that just to kind of contour my nose a little bit. And I go into that foundation really, really lightly because it is kind of a dark, ashy color. I wanna be very careful not to put too much on my nose. I go in really light with that and just kind of take it down the sides of my nose because I do have kind of a big kind of button nose. So I like to shape it a little bit, give it a little bit more of a pointier shape so that's what I'm doing here using that foundation just taking it down the sides of my nose since I do have the concealer down the middle this just allows me to automatically shape my nose when I put that darker foundation on the side so and I love the way this looks and once I set it with a translucent powder it looks really good and it looks natural 
and I take that a little bit up into the brows so that it looks just super natural. Nice, decent contour. I love the way that looks. I'm gonna take my Real Technique sponge and just kinda pat it down a little bit. Make sure everything's blending in. You know, you have to constantly do that when you're doing your makeup. Just make sure everything's blended and looking good. Now I'm ready to go ahead and set my concealed areas. I absolutely love the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I'm in the shade Medium Deep. It's the perfect shade for me to set my highlight because it's a few shades lighter than my skin complexion and it's just such an amazing powder, you guys. It really helps me not to crease. It sets my face perfectly. All those concealed areas are set so well and again, they pop out because of the color of this powder they continue to pop out and really show some definition on my face so I like to go in really heavy with that powder in all the areas that I put concealer just packing that on really really good And once I get it on there really good, that's when I like to kind of start to press it into the skin. I don't necessarily bake, but I do go in with a good amount and then start to like press it down into the skin really well. That's just my technique. Um, baking kind of tends to make me look a little bit cakey. So I just put it on and then I go in really good with my sponge. Here I'm just bringing back out my nose contour because I did cover it a little bit. So I still have some product left on that brush. So I'm just going to go back over my nose contour because I like to keep my nose chiseled girl this little chubby nose of mine <laughs> but now you see I'm pressing in that powder just making sure to pick up all the excess using my sponge Now before I go in with my blush and my highlighter, I'm going to go ahead and set my base using the Huda Beauty Resting Boss Face Setting Spray. I really love this setting spray you guys. It does have a scent to it. I know a lot of people said it's like so strong. It has a scent to me but it doesn't like knock me out. But I love that it sets my makeup all day. So I love this setting spray <laughs> even though it does smell y'all. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is bronzing and setting all the areas that I contour. To do that I'm going to be using the Black Radiance True Complexion Contour Palette. I'm going to be using the Sculpt shade in the middle here. I basically take that and go over all the areas that I contoured. Because my contour is so dark, I don't have to worry too much about this completely washing out my contour because it's so much darker than this bronzing shade. So I take that and go over all those areas to set them and make sure they're really set. I do that on my cheeks, underneath my chin where I put the contour. I also take that and go on the sides of my nose to make sure that that contour is set on the sides of my nose. And I just love this shade. Not only does it bring warmth to my face, but like I said, it sets that deep dark contour and makes it look a little bit more natural. So this is my technique for setting my contour and making it look really natural, but also bronzing up my face. The next thing I'm going to be doing is taking a blush. My favorite blush right now is the Kevin Aquan, the Creamy Glow Brush in the color Hot Pink. I absolutely love this color and I love a cream blush because to me it just makes my makeup look natural. If I have a lot of powder on, no matter what I've done to my face, when I go ahead and add this cream blush for some reason, it really just brings back that skin-like look to my face. So I love this blush. I pray to God I never run out of it. Like I hope this never gets discontinued because I absolutely love this blush and this color looks so good on my skin. I just take my finger and pat it into my skin. I start at my cheeks and kind of drag it up towards my temple a little bit and it just gives me a nice flush. It's really strong right now, but I'm going to show you how I diffuse that a little bit in a second. So my next step, of course, is to highlight my face. I'm using the Fenty Kilowatt Highlighter Duo. I'm using the color Hustler Baby to highlight right above my cheeks, above the area that I put that blush. I'm sorry about the camera not focusing you guys in the beginning of this. I don't know why my camera tripped on me, but it'll focus in a second. But I'm going in with that Kilowatt Highlighter and putting that on my cheeks above the blush. I'm also gonna go in the bridge of my nose with that, with a small brush. I think this 
this brush is made by the brand Kestrel, and I purchased that at TJ Maxx. But I'm just gonna take that down the bridge of my nose and also on the tip of my nose and just kind of rub it in to bring a little bit of shine to the middle of my face. I'm also gonna go underneath my brow bone with that and in the corners of my eyes just to brighten up my eyes a little bit and bring a little bit of shine. I love my highlight to be somewhat subtle. I like it to show more when my face hits the light and when I kind of turn my head versus seeing it all the time. So I don't go too crazy with the highlighter, but I do like it to pop, girl, just like that blush. I like my highlighter and my blush to show up and show out, okay? <laughs> Now before I go ahead and do anything else, I just wanna make sure everything is perfectly blended. I'm gonna take this flat brush and just blend everything out. Make sure there's no harsh lines. Make sure my highlight and my blush isn't looking too crazy. That's what I like to do with a clean brush before I go in and set my face one more time with that Resting Boss Face Spray from Huda Beauty. I love that spray. So the last thing I like to do before I go in and apply my lipstick is to set my face with a sheer translucent powder, you guys. I find that this helps my makeup not to oxidize, to stay in place, and to last all day. And the powder I like to use is the e.l.f. Perfect Finish HD Powder. I use a buffing brush to apply that all over my face. This helps to not only set my foundation, prevent it from oxidizing, but it also kind of diffuses my blush a little bit, helps it to kind of just look more natural and blend into the skin. I really love this e.l.f. finishing powder, you guys. I never have to worry about my makeup oxidizing or changing colors. No matter how much I sweat or if my oils start to come out, this powder guarantees that my makeup stays looking the same and stays true to color. So I take that all over my face, everywhere I apply foundation, everywhere I apply contour, I just go over that with that powder using a really flat and thick kabuki brush. And it's just such a great way for me to set my makeup and really get that satin finish on my makeup. So definitely pick up that product if you have any issues with oxidizing or if you have issues with your makeup breaking apart too soon. So now that my makeup is done, we are ready to focus on the lips, you guys. I'm gonna be lining my lips using the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Dark Brown. I really love this color on my skin. I'm a nice deep chocolate complexion, and this is a good color to show up and really give my lips a little bit of definition before I go in with my lipstick. For my lipstick, I'm gonna be using the e.l.f. Satin Lipstick in the color Beautifully Bare. This is a nude lipstick. I really love this color. Some people may say it's a little light for my complexion, but I've grown to really love this combination of this color with the NYX Jumbo Pencil. Like lining my lips, giving my lips a little bit of definition really helps me. I used to think I could not wear nude lipsticks because my lips don't have a lot of definition and they're sort of big. But with this technique, I've learned that if I line my lips with a nice color, I can wear nudes. And I like to go over the top of that using a gloss. I'm gonna be using this nude gloss from Forever 20 it's like a high shine gloss. I really love the way this looks with the lipstick. It just finishes everything off and I don't have to worry about my lips drying out or the nude cracking or anything like that. So I go over it with that and it just looks really good. I love this combination. I'm telling you those NYX jumbo pencils can be used for so many different things. You can use them on your eyes, you can use them on your lips. I really love them. So once that's all blended and looking good, we are ready to get into some outfits, y'all. Let's do it.
Thank you guys so much for watching my very first full Get Ready With Me. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like my hairstyle I came up with. I hope you like my outfits. And of course, I hope you like this everyday look that I wear. Y'all, I kept it real because this is really how I do my makeup every day. But as I learn more about makeup, I will definitely bring you guys more complex and more, you know, high-end looks. So it's all a learning process for me and I'm learning about the makeup right now. But I gotta tell y'all, I feel like I done got my feet wet. I done got my little cherry pop. <laughs> I feel like a virgin touch for the first time, y'all, doing this get ready with me. Like, I feel like this was the christening, okay? I am a legit YouTuber now, right? <laughs> anyway, I'll definitely bring you guys more of these videos, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed, and I will see y'all on the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>